Good evening. My name is Leon Jones, and what I'm going to do is present information to my class on current trends and issues within the tourism industry. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. Before I go any further, let me give you a little background about me. I'm a Navy veteran, served 17 years. I did work in the kitchen for a little bit in the Navy, but my background is in construction. Now, prior to the Navy, I worked in the hotel, restaurant, and tourism industry. Now, although we're dealing with current trends and issues in the tourism industry, tourism and hospitality to me are one and the same. So I've worked as a travel agent. I've worked as a line cook. I've worked as a housekeeper, front desk clerk. I was also a manager. The issue with the hospitality industry, the main issue is they can't keep people. And I'm going to break everything down in this conversation because this is information that is going to be useful for anybody who is going into the hospitality industry. Now, with all that out of the way, this is a presentation for my Purdue class, HTM 173, Introduction to Tourism Management, Professor Lipping A. Kai, PhD, is the instructor. Very good one at that. Saw a lot of his information. And my group members, of course, my name is Leon Jones. I am the team leader. Then there's Haley Gates. Lee, Leah Taylor, and of course, Ava Zellers. Now, what I'm gonna be doing as they gathered some information for me as well, we basically put everything together to come up with this PowerPoint. Since I have a lot of speaking experience and I do YouTube videos, I decided, let me go ahead and put my experience and present the material. Now, in this segment, I'm going to break it down into three areas. I'm going to talk about the current issues. Also talk about the current trends. And I'm going to talk about where do we go in the hospitality and tourism industry. Now, I'm going to start off by doing basically my introduction of what I see in the tourism industry. Number one, it's fast changing. Number two, tourism is not a single discipline. Why? Because it's connected to many other aspects of life, politics, entertainment, sustainability, to name three. Now, there are many factors that are involved in this industry because it is very diverse. And of course, when you're traveling, there's always a motive. People have different motives. But one area that I believe in traveling, why I like to travel, because it's a stress relief for me. However, what about working in a tourism industry? Because I'm going to tell you, it's not a cakewalk. There are issues in a tourism industry. And what I'm going to outline for you right now is five areas where there are big problems. It's marketing, legal, human, human resources, operations, and of course, legal affairs. Again, marketing, 
legal, human resources, operations, and legal affairs. Now, I'm going to break it down and start off with the marketing issues first. Now, I look at marketing because marketing is the area where you're going to have to get your brand out there for people to come in to your establishment or they're going to have to buy your product. And there's a lot of competition. Now, where I see the issues with marketing is Number one, you got changing demographics. It's always going to be challenging. Behaviors and change, behaviors and vacation patterns change, especially after COVID. You also have different market targets and segmentations. Now, you have different frequent guest programs. And when I say frequent guest programs, who does that involve? It could involve leisure travelers and business travelers. Then there's a maturation and segmentation of the fast food industry. Now, I say that because when COVID came, another market was created. If anybody has heard of DoorDash, and there's another one out there as well, well, they actually got places like Olive Garden to do delivery as well. And that created more growth, which creates more revenue for the establishments. Now, when it comes to the commercial lodging industry, there is a consolidation. And if you don't have good marketing, good branding, that will hurt your reputation. Now, another area that I see that has some issues in tourism. And this goes well with where you're going to be staying or where you're going to be eating if you are touring. Liquor liability. Some restaurants have lost their liquor license. Some hotels have lost their liquor license. Why? Because they sold liquor to somebody who wasn't of age. Then you have ethics. And when I talk about ethics, there are cases where you have internal thievery. You have a lot of deceit. Then when it comes to hotels, franchise contract issues. And I say that because a number of your hotel chains are not corporately owned, they're owned by management companies. And you see a lot of them change names. One day there's a Holiday Inn, the next day there's a Baymont Suites. It's very confusing for frequent travelers. Then you have a number of people who don't want to work. So the working age used to be 16. And you have some areas in this industry that they don't comply with the labor laws. Then you have your corporate governance. And then there's also a lack of proper insurance coverage. Now, I would say this is for individuals who have smaller establishments. Most of your larger establishments, they have enough insurance to cover everything and everybody. And when it comes to cost of development and renovations, this also goes with the hotels because the cost of materials to renovate your hotel like lumber and paint has been increasing. Moving on, one of my most important issues is human resource issues. Now, HR is the 
central area to any organization because they're the ones that work with your safety protocol. They write your employee policies. They hire. They keep your employee records. They keep your employee evaluations. Now, the issues that I see within tourism, and this is from my own experiment uh, experience. Again, this is from my own experience. I see there are changes in sexual harassment. A big order of business within the tourism industry is employee turnover, paying compensation, employee empowerment. See, when employees are empowered, they're going to get some satisfaction and morale. Why? Because it makes them feel like leaders when they can do a task without having to go to management. But hand in hand, paying compensation and employee turnover, they basically mesh one another. Because to be honest with you, people don't want to work for low pay. And there's some instances where there's no overtime or your hours get cut because there's not enough business. And one aspect of this industry that I can see is there are different cultures. So you have to understand different ethics. Everybody is different. So when it comes to people, there is some prejudice that is going on and some stereotypes because everybody who works in the tourism industry does not have a college degree. You have a number of people who work in this industry, depending on what area of tourism you work, they've been to jail, they come from a demographic that is poor. They come from a demographic that is different from me. And I'm talking about racially. But one big order of business that I can see as a issue when it comes to human resources inside of tourism is training and development. If you don't train your personnel properly, they're not going to grow and they're not going to understand their task fully. Now, employees are trained to do a job, but good training also keeps employee retention stock and you create skilled employees who can better serve your customer base. Because without the customer, there's no revenue in any field. But tourism is a billion or even trillion dollar business. And you don't know how many employees have worked in that field and how many were terminated from that field. You also had a turnover in management. And generally, when we get in this area, there's some individuals that don't understand people. And, and I say this, hospitality is a people profession. If you're not good with people, it's not the field for you. So remember, the guests are always first. And something else we need to talk about when it comes to issues in the tourism industry. With people sitting at home right now, you have your powers to be. They're gonna replace the human element with automation. Why? Because they want to keep their business going so they can make money. Problem with automation is, it breaks down sometimes. Just as I mentioned, you alleviate 
the human element. You do need the human element because from my personal opinion, the human element is a real element. It's more personal than talking to a robot. Then we go into smoking and non-smoking areas. Well, for health reasons, we try to have designated smoking areas. I know the smokers don't like it, but smoking is bad for you. Now, nobody's trying to turn smokers away. However, you have more people who don't smoke than who do smoke. And smoking to me is a public health issue, just like bad sanitation. Sanitation creates health problems too. Now, when I say sanitation, you have employees that, and I've seen this firsthand in the, in the restaurant industry, they picked food up off the floor and served it. They didn't wash their hands coming out of the bathroom. That's a public health issue. You can get sick and this is why in this industry, they make employees take a food service or manager certification exam. Because if you don't practice proper sanitation procedures, someone is likely to get sick. And guess what? The establishment will be sued. And we are a litigious society. A number of people will sue for anything. Uh, I remember back in the late 90s where an elderly lady sued McDonald's for a hot cup of coffee she put between her legs and she won. Another aspect, solid waste recycling. We are getting better at that, but we still have a long way to go. Many of us still don't know what to do with the solid waste. Now, I have an idea though. You can actually turn solid waste into electricity. There's a company in Northern Virginia called Covada that actually does that. And it's very important that we utilize recycling. That way we do that, we have what we call lean production. We have less waste, and that's what we want to do. More waste costs more money. And when you're dealing with food, because even in the tourism industry, you're going to deal with some form of waste. And in the restaurant industry, I will tell you, one of the biggest expense, expenses besides labor is food costs. Got to watch food costs. Got to watch your waste. Booking and revenue challenges. Well, again, this is in tourism when it comes to staying at hotels. If you can't book guests, you can't fill the hotels. And remember something about hotels. It's all seasonal. Now there are areas in the colder states like Colorado, the Northeast that have ski lodges, people will come there for the winter. But for the most part, here in the United States, a number of individuals want to go to warmer climates. And generally, Florida maintains a warm climate all year round. Therefore, when it comes to their destination in tourism, there's always a lot of money. Las Vegas is another area. And moving on to something that's very important, I will tell you that expectations of customers always changes. Customers might want to 
go skiing today, go skiing next year, and then in their third year, they change their mind. In fact, they want different types of accommodation. And remember, buying behavior is what we basically devote marketing to. So going back to a marketing issue, you have to be able to accommodate the changing aspects of customers. And then I just mentioned earlier about seasonality. For the most part, the tourism industry can be seasonal, depending if you are in Connors or out Connors. And what I mean in Connors, I'm talking about in the continental United States or out of the continental United States. Now there are some restrictions now. COVID has made it difficult because now to go anywhere, you're required to have a vaccine. And there are a number of people who haven't gotten that yet. And last but not least, in this area of the issues, you have to understand fire safety. Now, again, as a individual who's worked in construction, is your establishment up to code? If it's not up to code, you are going to get fined by OSHA if they come in and look at your establishment. And when it comes to menus, truth in menus. I'm going to say this because when you go to eat, now this is what I believe. I believe that portions are getting smaller, but I'm paying a lot more. Now, I know what's happening out here. Restaurants were closed, so now they're trying to make all their money back, so they're giving you smaller portions so you don't waste them, but they are raising their prices. And in the end, you're really not being truthful about your menu. Uh, portion size. You should be compensated for your portion size. And then what are you putting in your food? Are the kitchen personnel paying attention to the ingredients? Because your kitchen is your central location. That's where all your food comes out when you are prepping food? Are you rotating your food? Are you substituting MSG for salt? Sometimes customers aren't told that. And we're getting into public health issues too because there are individuals who are allergic to some types of food like shellfish. And it now, and it now leads to diet nutrition and health. There are still some fatty foods out there because if you look at it, we live in a country where the obesity rate is high. Now, now what I see going on now, a trend, a number of individuals are starting to eat healthier, but you have to understand this too about some foods. A number of these foods are GMOs. They're genetically engineered. So what you believe you're getting as reduced fat, they're putting something else in it. But in the end, these issues can be fixed, but you have proper leadership in place who needs to know this because these are public health issues 
and I'm sharing all these issues with you because in the tourism industry, you want to keep your guests happy. You want to keep your employees happy. And the last thing you want is a lawsuit. Because if you're a small establishment, you can go out of business really quickly, especially if you get too many insurance claims. So next, I'm going to move on to the current trends in tourism. And I say this because due to the current health crisis, and we're going back to 2020, many passionate travelers consider staying at home during the next year, while others explore different options than usually when it comes to travel. And they want to plan specific kinds of holidays that they have never tried before. Now, studies show that people plan to travel once it is safe and with as few restrictions as possible. Again, here are some trends that I found. Urban tourism. I say urban tourism is one because it's a quick getaway. And a quick getaway could be a weekend getaway, a staycation. Next, I look at rural and nature tourism, a breath of fresh air. Means you could go to the park, you can go to the mountains, especially if you're from a city and you're used to seeing a lot of small, you're hearing a lot of cars, you don't have any peace and quiet. Well, or you can go for your nature ride is in a nice state park. I work for the Indiana Department of Natural Resources, and it's nothing better than a park to basically relieve stress. And something else that's very important, domestic tourism. And when I say domestic tourism, I mean exactly what it is inside your country. You can go from state to state. You don't have to fly. You can drive. Even if your state is two days away, if you have the time and the money, there are a number of individuals doing that. Because one aspect that I notice about domestic tourism, because I like to drive, I don't have to worry about going through TSA. I'm in control. I can stop where I want. I can go to any hotel I want and I can eat any food that I want. I'm just giving you my experience when it comes to travel because I'm part of that trend. I do like domestic tourism. Now, business and mice tourism. What I'm going to say about that, that's just for business travelers who are looking for alternative ways of doing business rather than face-to-face. -face. They're doing Zoom calls. They're doing Microsoft Teams calls. They're talking on their telephones. They're doing everything except actually going overseas because now you can have conference calls where you can talk with somebody overseas. The technology is phenomenal. It actually brings the whole world together. And for business travelers, this saves them time and money. Also what I see, if you're into some holistic health, why not do some wellness tourism? It is a good alternative. And when I'm talking about holistic, I'm talking about yoga. I'm talking about exercising, but for the most part, talking about relieving stress. Relieving stress in a quiet area. But most of the time, when I talk about wellness, I'm talking about holistic health. And then a big one that 
we're all talking about is eco tourism. Eco, we talk about sustainability, green. We love green. Now, why do we love green? We love green because we talk about the environment. A clean environment, when we reduce CO2 carbon emissions, helps us breathe a lot better. Now, I'm not talking about global warming. What I'm talking about is the greener the area, the better it is for you as a person. And when something is green, we actually want to be there because, again, it's a lot of fresh air when it comes to green. And moving on to sports, I'm a sports fanatic and sports tourism. You go to different areas that have sports events. Like if you go to York, they got Wimbledon over there. World Cup soccer. You come here, we have football, baseball, basketball, hockey. And what I love about sports, you can get your excitement and your adrenaline going. And as a man, I enjoy sports, especially football, baseball, and basketball, and some hockey thrown in there as well. And when it comes to cultural tourism, that's also good too. If you've gone to other countries, you've seen other cultures. And that's a good thing because you understand that there are differences. However, the more cultured you are, the better it is for you. Because you can see the world a lot different. You eat different foods. You see different customs. You see different religions. You see different activities. Let me give you an example. Mardi Gras is much different in York than it is in New Orleans. Although there is some French relationships between New Orleans and, and Paris. But in the long run, being cultured gives you an upper hand. Because people who aren't cultured and they've only been in their own backyard, they tend to become a little more prejudiced, stereotypical. That's why it is very advantageous to travel. Now, what if you can't travel to a different country? I have that answer as well. Let me give you Chicago as an example. If you wanna know about different cultures, go to Chinatown, go to Little Italy. And what I like about Chicago, it is segregated, segregated in a good way, where you have different cultures right there. You can eat different foods and you can learn something about the cultures right here in America. You don't have to go anywhere. Also, food tourism. Food tourism, I can say, goes along with culture because different cultures like different foods, different flavors. Let me give you an example. Jamaicans like jerk chicken. People who live in the South, they like collard greens, chitlins. You have pizza from the Italians. And what's Funny about pizza, the pizza in Chicago, they love their deep dish. In New York, they love their thin crust. A Chicago hot dog is different from a Philadelphia cheesesteak. But when it comes to food, you can go in the urban areas and taste different types of food. And again, if you go to Chicago, 
Indianapolis, here in the Midwest, Columbus, you can see different eating establishments. And it's best that you go downtown. And you can do that solo, or you can do that as a family. And that's my next current trend, the old school trend. Now, families are getting smaller, but families are still doing some traveling. In fact, families love to go to places like Disney World. Families like to go to amusement parks. Families like to go to water parks. Now, going back to food tourism as well, something that you need to understand. I know in Valparaiso, they have the popcorn fest. In Plymouth, Indiana, they have the blueberry festival. They have apple festivals here. I know when you go out to Amish country, the eastern part of the state, there's Amish food. And you can get a lot of that food as well when you go to the Indiana State Fair or any of these county fairs. And I do see those trends taking place. Although COVID put a stop to a number of establishments in tourism, it has started to pick up again. And again, when you understand cultures, you get educated. It's called, and my next current trend in tourism is called educational tourism. That's when you go overseas and you can actually study overseas and learn about different cultures, learn different languages. You can even buy different souvenirs, see different sporting events. But in the long run, you're over there just to experience what it's like to live in another country. Now, I've already given you the issues within tourism. I've already given you the current trends in tourism. Now, I'm going to give you my future trends for tourism. And what I see is increased speed in shopping by the use of the internet in developed countries. And I call that internet shopping. Then there's extended reach in less developed company, uh, countries. And when I say extended reach, that's more technology like the internet. And then information. Although I see that the, the government wants more of our information here, there is improved security to keep our information private. Also, robotic labor sources. I know in Japan, it's already been tested out that they have robots in their hotels. And here in the manufacturing industry here in America, we also have robots. So for a number of individuals who don't want to work, that robot is going to take your job. And then when it comes to making reservations where, where you don't actually have to go to the hotel or even call the hotel, well, you can actually make a reservation over a voice automated or voice activated system. It's more system, uh, sophisticated and there's a lot of AI behind it. AI stands for artificial intelligence. And then there's improved navigation for rental cars. This is all for the future of tourism. And then there's electrical venues 
in rental cars and on planes and cruise ships like televisions. There's also Wi-Fi on cruise ships, planes, and cars. Then there's upgraded personal digital assistance for operations. And of course, there's marketing mass customization. Also, when we get into marketing, it's gonna be comprehensive branding campaigns for large and small operators, virtual online customer communication, and there's gonna be just in time seats, rooms and car inventories. And when I talk about travel agents, I believe there's gonna be an electronic travel agent. It's gonna be blended hybrid combinations. Then there's gonna be global anti-terrorist microchip security systems because terrorism is here, not as big as it is overseas, but it is here. So we have to protect our guests. And also, when it comes to fast food, and I do see that trend, more nutritional fast food offerings where the trans fat has been taken out. And my favorite, more emphasis on eco-tourism. This is when you get into sustainability, the environment. And then there's going to be improved customer relationship marketing information. And that's most likely going to be stored in a database. And when you look at computer systems, they're getting smaller. In fact, if you don't, if, if you don't know anything, I'll show you a computer right now. This right here. You have a computer right here. People don't know it. If you don't have your big computer, your phone is a computer. You can actually make reservations on your computer, your phone. Your phone is a computer. That's why they call it a smartphone. And they have more advanced devices coming out as well. And a good trend for Tourism is to always keep up with technology. Technology can be your best friend. It can be your worst friend. And finally, after looking at everything I just said, talked about the issues, talked about the current trends, I talked about what we are gonna have for the future. What does tourism look like? Now for me, I'm getting near that age to where I can almost retire. But there's a bright future for it. Early retirement, longer lifespan. And I say longer lifespan, because traveling does reduce stress. Early retirement, you have individuals now taking early retirements. And they're taking early retirements so they can travel. Shorter work weeks. If you build up a lot of vacation time, you can have a shorter work week. And there may be shorter work weeks where we go from 40 hours to 30 hours greater disposable income. Now, I say greater disposable income for this reason. If you don't have to travel long distance, you're gonna save some money. And what I mean by that is, I live here in Indiana. A weekend trip can save me a lot of money and I can still have a lot of fun. And when it comes to mobility, well, mobility is looked at in different ways. Transportation and telecommunications, and that's improving. And something else, smaller families. Now it might sound selfish, 
when you have less mouths to feed, you have more disposable income in your pocket. So overall, I believe that the tourism industry is going to be bright. But I want you all to tell me what you think of this presentation. And once again, my name is Leon Jones, and I thank you for allowing me to do this presentation on current trends and issues in the tourism industry. If you have any questions, you can always email me because right along with this presentation that I'm going to forward to my professor, I'm also going to put it on my LinkedIn page. And I'm also going to put it on my YouTube channel. But once again, thank you for listening.